Hey guys, welcome to the Ask EMBN Tech Show. Now this is the show where you send in your questions and I attempt to answer them in as much detail as possible. Now if you've got anything that you'd like covering, let me know in the comments down below with the hashtag Ask EMBN Tech. Right, we've got a fantastic question on this week's show as our main topic, which is what's the best lightweight, long range e-mountain bike for around about 5,000 pounds. But before we get into that, a couple more questions from uh, Peter Verdonshot, who says, what are those monster tires that Steve is using? Now, Pirelli are actually a new partner on EMBN and we've been using the 2.8 Scorpions. Now the Scorpion comes in a variety of different compounds. I tend to use the S, but I've also got an M on the front. But the reason I like a big volume tire with an aggressive tread pattern is simply because of its ability when you're climbing. And I find that the large volume tires are actually great on an e-bike because of that contact patch on the back. You can run them at pretty low pressures. We've got a video coming out on the channel where we drop the pressures down to, well, below 15 PSI. And what you can do on a low pressure tire and a climb, technical climb, is simply mind-blowing. So I think the other thing with large volume tires is actually it's good cushioning. So when you're riding rocky, rooty terrain, you get you don't get as much of a beating as you would out of, say, a 2.2 or a 2.35 tire. On that subject, Rizza5 asks, how would you recommend new riders approach downhill trails with large, loose rock sections? It's tough. Uh, what tips on such things as body position, balance, speed, braking technique, where to look, etc. Can you share A, for new riders, and B, for those looking to improve and increase speed? Tough terrain. Probably the hardest you can ride on any kind of two wheels. Now, um, we were actually up in Torridon uh, last year. We've been up there several times. And that is the place for loose rocks. It is, you know, it's very difficult to ride. So I think my tips for the new rider would be the first thing is take it steady. I would say try to avoid using your front brake on rocks because what tends to happen is your front brake will hook onto that rock and it'll the rock has a mind of its own. So try to avoid uh, using the front brake. Um, I think another technique if in loose rock on down sections is look for escape pockets as you're going down the hill. You know, try to, you know, look ahead, scan what's coming ahead of you. So go for those moments of, you know, calculated risk, if you like, going over through the rocks and then get to a pocket to, get, to take a breather and then go again. Obviously, if you're riding riverbeds, then that can go on for, you know, minutes, if not hours, if you're coming off a mountain such as Torridon. Uh, if you're looking to increase your speed, I think anything with, with downhill is, you've either got seen or unseen terrain. If you've got unseen terrain, which is which I'm guessing you're talking about here, I think it's an element of risk. There's always, always an element of risk involved. So, you know, when you've got a field of rock and it's, it's a difference between a millimeter or a centimeter, then, you know, there might be moments you'll come off. But um, what I will see, I say confidence, confidence, and just get to, to stay loose on the bike. Because if you, if you tighten up, that's when the bike will tend to go in its, its, its direction and, uh, and not the one you want to. So yeah, stay loose, look ahead, look for those pockets, stay off the front brake. Which brings us to the main topic this week, which is from H. The question from H, what is the lightest weight, highest power bike for around 5K? I want lightweight for the fun downhill and also if the battery quits on me, but I want to put max for the uphills and long days. So, I mean, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want a bike that can do all those things? Uh, and the good news is there does seem to be an increasing amount of long range, lightweight bikes on the market. So the first thing to cover is what are you getting? So I think what you're going to be getting is around about 150, 160 travel. I think that's, that's the best for for, you know, for the mixed days in the mountains. It's, it's a good mix of climbing ability and descending ability. Uh, I think 29, 27.5, it doesn't really matter. Um, obviously it comes back to something we mentioned earlier. I think good volume tires are quite key. What you need to be careful of when you're looking at lightweight bikes is that you need to make sure they're not being shod with super thin tires because there's a big difference in, in the weight of tires uh, and that can, 
that can affect you know the bike obviously if it's if it's a 21 kilo bike with super thin tires then that's not going to be much use if you're going to be riding really difficult terrain but to answer the question what is there out there well i think um i think the all bear wild is definitely a great choice if it's the right travels right wheel size uh, 750 watt hour or 624 watt hour battery. Start out about 21 kilos. It's got the fantastic Bosch motor in there. You can have it, either have that bike with the Bosch Performance CX or the Bosch Performance CX Race Limited Edition. Believe me, that Bosch CX Race Limited Edition motor will enable you to tackle technical climbs with increased confidence. So that's one. I think the second one on my list is the Bull Sonic Evo AM. SL1, yes, I know it's a bit of a handful. Uh, again, 750 watt hour uh, battery in this bike, but this time it's a Shimano EP8 motor. Uh, Shimano EP8, a very different motor to the Bosch. It's uh, it's just, it's not better, it's just different. It's different how you, how you do the riding on it. This time it's 140, 140, uh, 5,199 euros. I think it's a beautiful looking bike. It's a carbon frame. We don't actually get to see that many Bulls Sonic bikes in this country. I'd like to ride one, not actually, ridden one so my advice here is basically is, is actually based on what i've seen and a few reviews i've seen out there but what i will tell you is another bike on the list is the new cube stereo 155 now that's just been launched at 21 kilos but the problem with that bike it's seven grand so it's obviously not in the in the price point that you're talking about however cube actually do this bike which is the stereo hybrid 140 hpc pro this is 4,000 euros, and I think this is not only is it a killer looking bike, uh, I've actually ridden this bike in Torridon, 29 inch wheels, and I actually think that, I think the 29 inch wheels in mountain environment is actually easier to deal with than 27.5. I rode the Cube Stereo Action Team 160 with the 27.5 wheels, and I found it a bit more of a handful uh, in those rocky conditions, which obviously a previous question asked. So this bike, uh, I think the yellow is fantastic. It's got the Bosch motor, it's got the big battery, it's got great geometry. And, and I think Cube, obviously fantastic backup from Cube. But my pick, I think, would be this Canyon Spectral on CF. Remember the Canyon, the Canyon Spectral ons come in either the CF or the CFR version. The CFR are more expensive, but what you're getting here, you're getting the same geometry, the same wheel size. You're just getting different componentry, and um, yeah, and the spec is different. But this bike, again, it's a little bit over five thousand pound. But I think the green color is amazing. It's got a Shimano EP8 motor on it, but you know you've got the option of having either having a 720 watt hour or a 900 watt hour battery in the bike. And I guarantee you that bike is one of the most lively mid-travel bikes on the market. It's 150 mil travel. It's an absolute fly machine. So there you go. That's my uh, four picks for lightweight long, uh, oh, sorry, lightweight long range mid-travel e-mounted bikes, which are great for doing all kinds of riding. I hope that helps. Now, fortunately here in the UK, the temperatures are rising and uh, the whole subject of battery management uh, has come onto the radar though with a video which we did uh, on the best way to look after your battery. This comes from Steve Gates. Now Steve says, so is everyone else with non-removable battery just ignoring the advice which we had on EMBN and storing their e-bike in the garage at sub-zero temperatures over the winter or keeping their bike indoors? Now, this is a massive subject. Um, I guess when we talk sub-zero, obviously there's different sub-zero temperatures depending on where in the world you live. So I can't really generalize too much on that, but the answer is yes, you will get slightly better life from your e-bike if you do keep it in the, in the recommended uh, temperature conditions. Obviously not everyone can do that. I mean, what would be my advice? I mean, it's not ideal if you can't take the battery out of a bike and it's in like minus 20 for sure, but uh, there's ways, there's blankets there. I think, I think, uh, fr my friend Ray, the mechatronics engineer, says you can actually buy these little things which which keep the, the ambient temperature at a certain level. So maybe something like that might be a good thing to use. Although obviously you're gonna be careful where you keep that close to the bike. Uh, or yeah, or just take your bike into the bedroom would be my advice. I mean, yeah, not ideal. Uh, and then Tim, it says, I've been riding flats for 45 years. Why change now? And this is in relation to um, a Steve Pete video, which we did uh, did on the NBN show recently. Why would you change now? 
Do you know what, Tim? That's a question I ask myself every year. Um, on an e-mountain bike, I think flats are great. Um, I, I really, I would generally love to be able to ride flats and clips, but um, I've simply failed to, to conquer the uh, the clip pedal. But um, my, yeah, I'd say my answer would be just save yourself less grief and just just crack on and enjoy riding your e-mountain bike. Uh, so that's it, folks. That's it for this uh, month's Ask EMBN Tech. Remember to uh, put your questions in the comments down below. Hashtag Ask EMBN Tech. Uh, and we'll tackle another uh, subject next week. I think the whole thing about lightweight, long travel bikes is a very interesting subject. Obviously, we've got we've got this new breed of low to mid power bikes, which come in at 18 to 19 kilos. So, you know, I guess a lot of people are asking, why would you buy a 19 kilo low power bike when you can buy a high power long range bike, which is 21 kilos? It's a massive question. Hopefully, I've uh, given you guys some answers to that. See you next month.